I'm working on the Tascam uh, 122 Mark III and I'm aligning uh, the heads that have been removed and and replaced and this is my collection of uh, azimuth tapes that I've had over the years this is my best one it's I purchased this brand new right when Sony was uh, obsoleting them and what I generally do is use some of the older ones to start out with this is typically my sequence as I use this old telex that shows uh, 40 kilohertz at one uh, at seven and a half IPS which translates of course to uh, 10 kilohertz at one seven eights and I generally run through setting the uh, repro azimuth I generally go through these three tapes and one of the main reasons is to kind of save out my brand new tape but I also like having different uh, shells in there so I can see if there's much uh, difference between them and they, sometimes there's a little bit depending on how the how it's held in place there can be some difference in them I just like to be aware of that so I've done that already and following the repro azimuth on decks that have separate separately adjusted uh, record heads uh, discrete heads then the record head needs to be aligned to the uh, repro head and that's what I'm doing now and since I've got everything opened up here and um, the camera I thought I'd just make a video of it and show what my procedure is to do this and I'm using my sound technology uh, tape recorder analyzer to do this it has a uh, maybe unique I don't know if it's unique but it has a nice feature where it will uh, check it will test four frequencies simultaneously and these do have a they, they do have a specific tape that's used along with them to set the repro azimuth but I don't own that tape so I do that the conventional way with the scope and then I align the record head using the uh, using this instrument and I keep tapping on the tape because I don't the, the the holder isn't in place the door is not there and so I just keep kinda tapping on it to make sure that it's held held where it should be when I get the door on I'll double check this again and that will be shown in the uh, the full video of the rebuild but I won't show that on this one okay so there's uh, monitor electronics and then there's the tape there's the azimuth test on the tape and there are the four frequencies and it's actually not too far out right now you kind of see how just the tiniest amount of movement affects that so there's the adjustment screw for the record head And there's what I'm looking at. And because of my work habits and the way I have been trained to use machines, um, I'll always back up past where I want to be and then come back to it I don't know if I stated that very clearly what I mean is I'll go I'll go say I'll go left 
uh, past where I want to be in the center and then I'll come back up to the right and I won't go back left again if I do I'll go all the way left and um, and then come back up and that's from using machine tools that have dials on them and backlash so there's my actual numbers at that frequency I was out you know two thousandths of a degree five thousandths here at 5.7 kilohertz now 19's a little high I'm, I'm not happy with that nor that the five I can live with but 19's too much so we'll keep working on this back it off and then I'll come back up okay this is looking a little better got that 19 down to 11 at that frequency still a little high there but the lower end is looking pretty good You know, I suppose you could do this setting up you know four function generators I suppose I don't know if other equipment does this or not but I really like this for dialing it in very close so at this point I'm probably gone too far and I can kind of see that I did yeah so this is a start over but having done this now I've kind of got a feel for where I need to be where that that screw needs to be so I'll back it off and then I'll climb back up on it and I just kind of at this point know I have a pretty good feel for where it wants to be and for how touchy it is you know how much how much torque to actually put on it kind of get to a point where I stop looking at the screen and just try to move put, put the smallest movement I can on the screw so this is much better I'm going to live with that that's a good number and then like I say I'll check it again after the door is put on and now as a as a double check we'll check the frequency response this is just a bulk chrome tape And I'll set the low frequency here. I'll limit it to a thousand hertz so that it doesn't take quite so long to run the test. I'm only interested in the, the top end here anyway. And I can see that this is really doing quite well. And really what I'm interested in is the top end, uh, the extended frequency response, not, not below that. And really I'm not even interested 
in these numbers so much, I'm looking to see if it can do it. So I've got left and right channels responding at 29 kilohertz and then the left channel up to 33. Now, I'm not pretending for a minute that this is the frequency response of the deck. With a very short distance between the record and repro head gap, there will be some frequency bleed. And it will show up as this, you know, this extremely high end uh, frequency response. But in fact, it's not really there. The reason I'm looking for it is because if it is there, that confirms to me that I've actually got uh, the heads aligned correctly. If they weren't, then those high numbers would kind of cancel each other out. So when I get all done with this and make the final test and put the door back on, I will make the uh, final frequency response test like I always do by recording and then playing back and measuring the playback. Some decks, the difference is so little that it's negligible and it's, it's fine. And especially, you know, any decks that have the gaps uh, farther apart or separated, and of course all modern uh, real decks. But where the two head gaps are as close as they are on a lot of the cassette decks, um, you can get a false sense of uh, frequency response if you strictly go by monitoring the recording while you're making the test. It's always always the safest bet to go back and play the frequency sweep and uh, measure that. So that's what I do. And again, I'll show that on the upcoming rebuild video which uh, coincidentally I have a few excerpts of here. So stay tuned for that one and thank you for watching this one. Wonderful end of summer, beginning of fall, and I'll see you soon.